Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is heart. H-E-A-R-T. Really? You bet your life. For more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, on Thursday, November 13th, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will put on display for the first time what we honestly believe to be the most beautiful car ever built, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. We'll have more to say about this exciting news in a few minutes. And here he is... The one, the only... You'll have to speak to my campaign manager. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. We have a housewife for you, Groucho. You have, eh? Yes. Uh, she was selected from our audience just before we went on the air. Oh, how nice. And uh, her partner is a man with an interesting occupation, Mr. Oh. Lewis Spinner. Folks, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto. <laughs> Say the sacred word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. And now then, uh, what have we here? A beautiful, bewitching creature. That's what we have. That's a real charmer. Tell me, are you married? Oh uh, yes. I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking to Mr. Spinner over here. <laughs> Mr. Spinner, you're one of the most beautiful little charmers I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, you look like a uh, little like uh, Adlai Stevenson. I've been told that quite often. Mm. My customers call me the portable Stevenson. The portable Stevens? Uh, I'm kind of sewed off. Oh. <laughs> well, are you planning on any whistle stops or anything? Uh... I didn't even make up my mind yet I which see. way I'm going to walk. Well, that's, that's a very canny answer. <clears throat> what is your name? Angel Maria Mascofotello. Uh, would you mind repeating that? Angel Maria Mascofotello. Well, let me know when you stop at Dallas. Huh? <laughs> Angel, where are you? What's Mascofotello. Mascofotello. You got enough mm -hmm. names there for a whole law firm. You know that? <laughs> well, don't you know that? Oh, yes, I do. You do. What does your husband call you? Angel. Oh, Angel, huh? Yes. Oh, oh, you play at Wrigley Field? No. <laughs> so he calls you Angel? Oh. Well, what's good enough for your husband is certainly good enough for me. <laughs> Mr. Adlai, where are you from? I'm mm. from Dure, Hungary. No, not very. I just had dinner. <laughs> now, cut out the nonsense. Where are you from? Dure, that's uh, halfway between Budapest mm. and Vienna. It's a whistle stop on the Orient Express line. <laughs> A whistle stop on the Orient Express line, huh? And, uh, mm. Angel, what is your hometown? Well, it's... Are you sure you're married? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh. Sure. It's a beuvrage. It's a small town in the northern part of France, and it's situated 250 kilometers from Paris, four hours by train. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling us uh, how old you are, Angel? Yes, I'm 27 years old. Twenty civilian years old. <laughs> well, how old are you when you're in the service? <laughs> now, Mr. Spinner, let's get back uh, to you for a while. Huh? You say you're from Hungary. Huh? That's right. Uh, what did you do in Hungary? I studied law. Oh, and are you practicing law now? No. Why not? Well, when I came to this country, I found that there was no urgent need for Hungarian lawyers here. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous. Suppose you were being sued by a Hungarian. <laughs> I know every time I've been sued, it was by a Hungarian. We don't sue each other, we fight it out. Oh. Do you know how they make an omelette in Hungary? Do you know that? Well, we don't call it omelette, we call it palacinta. Well, no matter what you call it, there's an old recipe, a Hungarian recipe. Oh. And where they say in Hungary, when you want to make an omelette, the directions go, it says, first you steal two eggs. <laughs> that, that's a true recipe. Don't laugh I on the point, you idea. know, if you could laugh while I'm talking first. <laughs> the, uh, in, in Hungary, when you want to make an omelette, the recipe says, first you steal two eggs. I guess they heard it the first time. <laughs> well, you're an interesting couple, and I hope you win a reasonable amount of money here tonight. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,000 question. Right now, here's a beautiful young lady with news about another beauty, the 1953 DeSoto. 
Hello, this is Wendy Barry. And right now I want you to get a pencil and mark down this date. November the 13th. You got it? Thursday, November the 13th. That's a wonderful day. That's the day the stunning new 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I've sneaked in and seen this new DeSoto, and really I think it's the most beautiful car ever built. No matter how you look at this new DeSoto, inside or out, it's perfectly beautiful. Outside, it's longer, lower, and lovelier than you ever thought a car could be. And inside, well, it's as lovely as my favorite living room. They won't let me tell you any more about this beautiful new car, but you can see it for yourself. Just be sure and be at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Thursday, November the 13th, the day the distinguished new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Oh, I'm going to be on You Bet Your Life television sometime soon, along with this beautiful 1953 DeSoto. So watch for us, won't you? All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Buy it on Fanneman? I'm here. Explain the rules. All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number five, familiar Latin expressions. Well, here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1999. 1999. See the penny. <laughs> uh, what is the Latin expression that means solid earth? Terra firma. Terra firma is right. Well, you're on your way. You have $39.99. And you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of this vast sum are you going to try this time? Bet it all. All? Save a penny. Save a penny. Save a penny. 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 Okay. What is the Latin expression that means privately or secretly or in confidence? Sub rosa. Sub rosa is right. (laughs) You now have $79.97. They have that much? Yes. Well, land sakes. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? How much do we have? You have 79.97. 79.96. 79. Is that all right with you? Uh, uh, yes, I guess eh? so. Mademoiselle? We. Uh, we. Oui. Oui. Yeah, we too. Uh, what is the Latin expression that means endless or without limit? Infinite. That's right. Ad infinitum. We call it. You now have $159.93. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Shoot the works. Shoot the works? Yeah. All right. What is the Latin expression that means one out of many? It is the motto of the United States. Uh E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum is right. (laughs) And you wind up with a grand total of $319.86. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. We invited some business women to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Martha Gallagher. Her partner also from our studio audience is Mr. Alan Palmer. Folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Alan Palmer and Martha Gallagher, eh? Where are you from, Martha? I was born in Waco. Waco? And uh, may I ask how old you are, Martha? Twenty-five. Are you married? No. No, you're talking. Alan uh, Palmer. <laughs> That's you. Uh, are you married? Yes. Who cares, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Palmer? Passaic, New Jersey. Passaic, huh? I know it very well. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Trenton, isn't it? No, it's about 60 miles. Well, it was a hop, skip, and a jump for me. I hopped a train, skipped town, and jumped bail. <laughs> Alan, did you come to California direct from uh, Passaic? No, I was in New York for about 30 years. You stopped off in New York for 30 years? What's the matter? Couldn't you find your suitcase? (laughs) Those train connections in New York can be pretty bad sometimes. You must have been on the Long Island Railroad, weren't you? What were you doing in New York? Well, I was growing up, went to school, got married and had two children. What a novel way to spend time between two trains. <laughs> now, Martha, since you're not married, I presume you have some other visible means of support, huh? Yes. Let's see. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a geologist. Please, no politics in this program. <laughs> What's a geologist? Well, a geologist is a sort of scientist who studies the 
uh, the mineralogy and the petrology and the structure and the paleontological evidences and the materials of the earth and interpret <laughs> Could you make it simple? You know, uh, you're not talking to a ten-year-old out here. <laughs> well, we... What do you actually do? We study the Earth's crust. Oh, well, I've got plenty of that. <laughs> Why do you study the Earth's crust, uh, Daddy? Oh, Mama. Uh, Martha. Well, to find out the mineralogy and the petrology and the structural... Back to that again, eh? <laughs> Let's get the whole thing and we'll all go back to Passage, shall we? Now, uh, who do you work for, uh, Martha? I work for Bankline Oil Company. Oh, I see. And what do you do for them? Well, I uh, study the geology and... <laughs> this whole thing is becoming strangely familiar to me. <laughs> it all seems like a dream. <laughs> I uh, draw up a picture to tell the company where to drill a well. In other words, you make oil paintings, is that it? <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Al? Well, I'm a locksmith. Oh, you mean you went to Yale? <laughs> no. A locksmith, huh? Eh? How did you happen to get into the locksmith business? Well, I, when I was a kid, I used to like to take things apart and try to put them back together again. Mm-hmm. Have you ever picked locks? Oh, yes. All I time. picked locks the other day. I was at a party, and they were saving cheese sandwiches and lock sandwiches. <laughs> and I picked locks because I don't like cheese sandwiches. <laughs> And for those who don't know, Lox is a fish that got red in the face from swimming up the Columbia River. <laughs> what kind of jobs are you called upon to perform, Al? Well, all types, emergency lockouts of homes, cars. Has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, like locking yourself out of your own house? No, but uh, I was called to uh, help a woman out of the bathroom that she locked herself in. She, she locked herself in a tub? No, in the bathroom. Oh, I see. And she kept yelling, when you get the door open, don't look. I haven't got any clothes on. Well, very few people are dressed when they're in a bad job. <laughs> hey, some of them wear a hat, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, don't keep us in suspense, Al. Uh, d- did you look? No. Besides, she had a towel wrapped around her. How do you know if you didn't look, Mr. <laughs> Don't you think he's in a more interesting profession than you are, uh, <laughs> I imagine he is. <laughs> Let's get Eddie again. As a geologist, tell me, uh, what's the latest date? <laughs> That's a pretty old one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I with you, Martha, but when you're talking to a geologist, sometimes you're compelled to dig pretty deep. <laughs> now, tell me how you go about finding oil. Uh, how, do you, how do you look for oil? Well, you uh, find a place that you think it ought to be in and get the company to lease the land or buy it, and then you drill a well. Mm-hmm. After you find a likely spot, uh, what happens? Well, you drill the well, and then the geology department goes to work and studies the well and the findings from it and other companies' wells and goes out and studies the rocks and the structure of them and so forth, and then we draw up a picture to tell the management why the oil wasn't there. (laughs) And the next thing, the stockholders get a letter. (laughs) Well, you've both been real informative, and I wish you lots of luck in the quiz. All right, now you're going to play your bet you like. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected locations of colleges. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first couple won $319.86, and the secret word is heart. How much are you going to bet? You have $20. 20 Want to go for 20 Well, 1998. $19.98. $19.98. What college is at South Bend, Indiana? Notre Dame. Notre Dame is right. Well, you're on your way. Good start. You have $39.98. Did you go to Notre Dame, Martha? No. My thoughts on account of Gallagher being the last name. There. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of this $39.98 are you going to try? $39.97. Talk it up. Thirty-nine ninety-seven. Okay. What college is at New Haven, Connecticut? Yale. Yale. Oh. That's a 
fine question and ask the locksmith. You now have $79.95. And here's your third question. How much of that sum will you bet? $79.94. Okay. What college is at Evanston, Illinois? University of Illinois. No, it isn't. Everson. No. Time's up, kid. Take a stab if you don't know. Think of some college around there. Yes. Illinois. No, I'm sorry. It's Northwestern. You now have one penny. <laughs> go bet it all. You're going to bet it all? All right. Now, you're going to bet a cent. What college is at Ithaca, New York? It's Cornell. Cornell is right. And they wind up with two cents. Two cents. That's what I'm That's what you don't put it. Keep your two cents out of this. <laughs> All, right. All right. We're not going to let you leave here with two cents. We're going to give you enough money to bring this sum up to 25 bucks. So at least you'll each get 12 and a half. Now, get this right, and you'll have uh, 25 bucks. And no coaching, please. What kind of wood was the old oak and bucket? <laughs> oak. oak is right. <laughs> Good luck to the soda plenty dealers. Uh, Groucho, we have a young lady from the City Hall Information Bureau and a test pilot for you now. They were chosen just before we went on the air. Miss Evelyn Hayden and Mr. Bill Bridgman, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the soda plenty dealers. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Evelyn Hayden. Now, let's see, a test pilot and the girl from the Information Bureau. Huh? Oh. Is that right? Inflammation? Oh, oh, information. Oh, information. Well, which one is from the Information Bureau? I am. Oh. That said you was a quick answer. You're very well informed, uh, Evelyn. Do you pronounce it Evelyn or Evelyn? Any way that you say is all right with me. It won't, uh, you won't win any more money by those tactics. <laughs> In that case, I'll call you Evelyn, huh? Where are you from, Ev? Gosh, we get familiar quickly up here. <laughs> I'm from Colorado. Oh. It's amazing how much this girl knows. I just met her and already she knows where she's from. <laughs> Maybe I can stump her. Are you uh, married? Uh, no help in the audience, please. <laughs> you are married, huh? Uh, Mr. Bill Bridgman, eh? Uh, you're a test pilot? Yes, that's right. What is your hometown, Bill? Tumwa, Iowa. Are you uh, married? No, no. Not married, huh? Fine-looking, rugged, youthful test pilot like you not married? Uh, how come? I was married once. That's how come. Well, he's a test pilot, all right. <laughs> you test anything. <laughs> who do you work for, Bill? I work for Douglas. Douglas who? Fairbanks? No. <laughs> Douglas Aircraft. It's an odd name for a man, isn't it? Douglas Aircraft. <laughs> it must have been named after that factory in Santa Monica. <laughs> what does a test pilot do on his job? Oh, it's 99% talk and about 1% action. You sound like a political candidate. <laughs> who, do, who do you talk to and uh, what about? Well, you spend quite a bit of time talking to the engineers, the aerodynamics, and the plant. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, fun? Not a bit, no. I don't think so. <laughs> I guess they're pretty smart. They're Very engineers. smart, yes. Yeah. Well, they must be smart. They stay on the ground and let you fly the plane. <laughs> <laughs> no slamiels, <Schlemiel> eh? <laughs> I think I'll get my feet on the grind, uh, ground. Uh, Ev, uh, where is your information bureau? City Hall lobby. In the lobby? Well, that's the right place for it. There's certainly plenty of lobbying going out at the City Hall. <laughs> you, uh, what kind of questions do you get down at this uh, place, uh, Mrs. Hayden? Oh, we get questions on almost every subject. Well, what, for example? Well, you mean if I ask you a question on any subject, you could give me an answer? Well, uh, pr- uh, probably I couldn't answer everyone, but if I couldn't, I could tell you the proper place to go. <laughs> well, I expect to go there eventually. <laughs> We're all going there. Right? <laughs> Let's not be too cocky about it, anyway. <laughs> I bet you've all got plenty to answer for, too. <laughs> How long have you been test piloting, uh, uh, Mrs. Hyde? I mean, Mr. Bridgman? Uh? About four years. 
Well, how did you get into this uh, kind of soft racket? Well, I uh, came out of the Navy and flew for the airlines for a year and decided that I'd like test flying better and uh, went to work for Doug. Mm -hmm. What kind of planes do you test? Uh, usually research, uh, high-speed research aircraft. What's the fastest anyone has ever flown? Do you, do you happen to know? To date, it's 1,238 miles an hour. 1,238 miles an hour? A man must be off his nut to fly that fast. <laughs> What's the fastest you've gone, Bill? 1,238 miles per hour. Well, Bill, it's an honor to have you here, and I apologize, and you don't have to get married again if you don't want to. <laughs> now, let's consider this uh, 1,238 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. At that speed, how long would it take you to fly across the country? Well, I think it's been figured that uh, if you left New York at 9 a.m. and... Uh, Travel across the country, you would arrive at Los Angeles at 8.30 a.m. on the same day. You know, I think it slaps a dragon. <laughs> How can you land here a half hour before you take off in New York? Do you oil your wristwatch with Zeratan? <laughs> no, no, because well, of the three-hour time dis difference and... Uh, yeah. Sidereal time against the sun. You can you can beat the time lag and make it a half an hour sooner. You get here a half hour before you before left. Before you left, that's right. I don't think I'd care for that. <laughs> I could get my face slapped in Los Angeles even before I kissed a girl in New York. <laughs> How does it feel to go that fast? Over a thousand miles an hour. Oh, I think you'll get a greater feeling of speed right here driving through traffic in Los Angeles. <laughs> you think men will be able to go faster than that? I think the next year we'll find two or three planes going faster than that. What do you think of flying saucers? I'm not a believer myself. I, uh, I haven't seen any. I, if one lands out here at Municipal, I, uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> As I remember, Bill, you flew pretty high when you set that record. Uh, how high did you fly? It was recorded at 79,400 feet. That's about 16 miles, huh? 16 miles, that's right. Some fellows will do anything to avoid getting married again. <laughs> well, Bill, it's been an honor talking to a courageous man like you, and we'll make it safe for the rest of the world to fly, and I wish you the best of luck in all your future flights. Thank you. And you too, Evelyn. <laughs> all right, now you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples and get a chance at the $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first couple still leads with $319.86. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected wides ending in uh, AC as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 19 and a half. 1950. 1950, 1975. 1975. Okay. 1975. All right. What is the word ending in ACT, AC, that means a yearbook containing all sorts of facts and information? Uh, the, uh... You can help him, you know, uh, Evelyn. You're his partner. Almanac. Almanac is right. <laughs> and you're on your way. You have $39.75. Well, you came out of a steep dive that time, didn't you, for that? <laughs> All right, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-nine seventy-five are you going to try? Mm, about thirty-nine and a half. Yeah. Thirty-nine fifty. Who nine fifty? What is the word ending in act that means a mentally unbalanced person who is dangerous? Maniac. Maniac is right. You now have seventy nine dollars and twenty five cents. Now you have seventy nine twenty five is your third question. How much are you gonna bet? Seventy nine. Okay. 79. What is the word ending in act that means the signs that astrologers use? Zodiac. Zodiac is right. <laughs> You now have $158.25. This is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to try for? $158.25. Oh. Oh. What is the word ending in act that means a clear liquid used in wood finishing? Shellac. Shellac is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $316.50. And that means the French bride and her partner with $319.86. In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Off of course. And now 
here's a lovely lady you all know with news about the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. Hi, this is Arlene Francis, and I want to make a date with you. A date for Thursday, November 13th. That's a really important day because that's the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I have seen this 1953 DeSoto, and honestly, I think it's the most beautiful car ever built. This new 1953 DeSoto is lower, longer, lovelier, with a wonderful styling and beauty of design both inside and out. I know you'll want to be among the first to see this beautiful new 1953 DeSoto just as soon as it goes on display. Let's make that a date then, Thursday, November 13th at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display. Don't keep me waiting, will you? Oh, and I'm going to be on You Bet Your Life television sometime soon, along with the beautiful 1953 DeSoto. Watch for us, won't you? Here's the French bride and her partner, Groucho, the winning couple, all ready for the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Well, how are you, cutie, you? You go back to France if you win this money? La oh. Belle France? No, I win. Would you take another flyer at Hungary? No. If you go back, don't tell them that joke that I told about the two eggs and the omelet, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I told it here. Here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Are you ready? I'm sure everyone has read the book of Genesis in the Bible. See how well you remember it. It tells, among other things, how Cain slew his brother Abel. For $2,000, tell me the name of the land to which Cain fled after the murder. Talk it over. What's the answer you two have decided upon? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. It's the land of Nod. That's the correct answer. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz? Uh, $319.86. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Don't forget, folks, on Thursday, November 13th, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto will go on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Make a date to see it, and when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Folks, freedom is everybody's business. In America, it's your responsibility to preserve that freedom. And the best way you can do that is by your vote. It's important that you vote if you're going to get the kind of government you want. No matter how you vote this November 4th, be a good American. Get out and vote. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenderman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. (laughs) 